this video, we'll discuss the concept of the 15-minute city. Which cities are adopting this plan? And its pros and cons. Watch the video until the end to discover if the 15-minute city is a utopian proposal or an undemocratic ploy to deprive residents of their freedom. Will your city be next? In the aftermath of the COVID-19 lockdown, cities across the world are looking to offer a new plan for urban living. Many people embraced the work-from-home culture and enjoyed the release from the shackles of a lengthy city commute during the COVID lockdown and rediscovered their local domestic area. Many people don't want to go back to life before COVID and it has undoubtedly changed the way we work and live. Introducing the 15-minute city. The concept is simple. Plan urban environments within a 15-minute radius. People should be able to access facilities such as work, housing, food, health, education, culture and leisure, all with the ability to walk or bike ride within 15 minutes. The 15-minute city will design cities around humans, not cars. Buildings will serve multiple purposes and neighbourhoods will be designed so that people live, work and thrive without the need to commute out of their district. The term 15-minute city was coined by Carlos Marino in 2016. Carlos Marino is the scientific director of ETI chair at the Pantheon Sorbonne University in Paris and is a Franco-Colombian urbanist. Carlos claims, we waste so much time adapting to the absurd organisation of most of today's cities. By designing or redesigning cities, we can change the indignity for our well-being and the climate. And the climate seems to be the most prominent benefit that this proposal seems to be pushing. The 15-minute city concept is gaining traction in a way it would not have done before the pandemic, when being able to meet one's needs within a short distance by walking or biking became a matter of life or death. It's actually been discussed by prominent agencies and political leaders long before the COVID pandemic, including the World Economic Forum and the UN. The first city to adopt this revolutionary approach to urban city living and the 15-minute concept is Paris. In fact, Parisian mayor Anne Hidalgo centred her successful re-election on the concept in 2020. And she's not alone. Cities like Barcelona, Buenos Aires, Toronto and Melbourne have all bought into the idea too. London, Cleveland and Portland in the US are looking into adopting this concept, whilst Melbourne, Copenhagen and Oxford in the UK have already started to implement some physical changes. The eco-philosophy behind the 15-minute city is to build more environmentally friendly and socially inclusive cities. The emphasis of the 15-minute city is on walking and biking, with less emphasis on driving. Eliminating long commutes, traffic jams and the use of vehicles, fossil fuel usage, carbon emissions and air pollution will decrease thus making for a sustainable environment. And the environment and global change have been the headlining reasons cities are looking to adopt this idea. But there's an underlying sinister implication to its citizens. Whilst there is indeed some merit to having all of life's necessities on your doorstep, conspiracists argue that this is a government plot to put us all into some permanent form of lockdown and control us. And there are some legitimate concerns. On October the 24th, 2022, Oxford County Council announced its plans to divide the city into six 15-minute neighbourhoods, starting in 2024. Residents of each district will be permitted to leave their zone up to 100 times a year in their car, but will be fined thereafter. Cameras will track and capture citizens' movements, and ANPR, or Automatic Number Plate Recognition, will automatically fine drivers of cars leaving their district. When Oxford Council released its plans, it was met with widespread criticism with over 93% of those involved in the local consultation phase objecting. Their plans took the internet by storm and shed a negative light on what many advocates hailed as an urban revolution to create greener cities. Oxford Council dismissed critics as conspiracy theorists and collaborated with social media platforms to take down any negative coverings of the topic. Despite their insistence to go ahead with their plans in 2024, Oxford residents continue to push back. So what are the criticisms against the 15-minute city plan? Some theorists believe the 15-minute city plan is part of a conspiracy run by global elites to control the masses. Katie Hopkins described the idea as coercive, drawing parallels with the tyranny she saw in COVID lockdown restrictions, while others see the plan as part of a plot by the World Economic Forum or the UN to deny people their fundamental freedoms and possessions in the name of protecting the environment. Not Our Future, 
an organisation founded by David Fleming, organised a protest against Oxford's 15-minute plan. According to the organisation, the plans are OK, but they should have been developed with the public's approval, especially as there seems to have been such an arrogant disregard for the public from the early stages of the plan. Oxford County Council's Cabinet member, Mr Enright, stated that the plan is going to happen definitely, regardless of public opinion. Now that's hardly democratic, is it? So what are the pros of the 15-minute city plan? It will make for a more environmentally sustainable city. The 15-minute city plan will reduce car use, traffic and emissions, and it will help meet its net zero climate targets. Another benefit of the 15-minute city is better health for residents through more walking or cycling and the time saved by reducing commuting. Advocates of a 15-minute city claim it will also make for a thriving local economy as people spend more money at local businesses. But what are the cons? The 15-minute plan gives little consideration to the elderly, disabled or mums with children who cannot easily use a bus or bike. Even bad weather can make a car indispensable. The 15-minute city plan favours wealthier communities, especially as it's coming from high-placed politicians, wealthy institutions and councillors who don't live in the city or spend much time there. What is the fate of car owners who work or own businesses across town, or those who regularly travel to visit friends and relatives in other districts? Will these cities ban cars altogether in the future? Furthermore, dividing the city into smaller districts may exasperate segregation along the lines of race or class and urban disparities between districts. Residents will have to content themselves with local amenities, even if they have a much smaller range of facilities and are less well connected by public transport. The 15-minute city is largely a European concept and may not translate well to the layout of North American city design, causing potentially further inequality. There are many concerns surrounding the 15-minute city plan. While the idea may not be a bad one in itself, it is crucial to consider these concerns. The opinions of residents should be heard and residents shouldn't be financially penalised if they want to leave their zone. Music